Being surrounded by nature is the place where I don't feel judged. It's a place where, you know, I feel so spiritually connected. I may have never come across another person that wears a niqab to go hiking, but we are very much capable to do all these things. There is a big misconception of Muslim women. I think a lot of it is generated from media. You see news flashes of, you know, oppressed women. Coming from a British background, I can say that we're not oppressed. Wearing the niqab or the hijab is liberating for me. It's a sense of freedom. My name is Amira, and I'm the founder of The Wonderless Women. We are here to engage and encourage Muslim women to get outdoors. Oh my God. Oh, oh, so nice to see you again. You guys? I saw you at Peak District, wasn't it? Yeah. Have you done any hiking since? Or? A little bit, but mainly local, but okay, I've been so looking forward to this, yeah. <laughs> so today we're in the Lake District and we're at the mountain called Blencathra. So it's one of the highest mountains here. What shoes have you got? Have you got, got your... these, but they're not good for We will need to get your shoes changed. So Ali, is it your first time in the Lake District today? Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, wow. When you were driving through the mountains, how did you feel? I felt like I was in a different dimension. <laughs> it's, it's just so beautiful, it's isn't unreal, it? It's unreal, honestly. I'll be ready for this. Yeah. yeah. The Lake District is a really special place for me. There's just everything there that you can possibly have in terms of nature. It's Ali's first hike today and we're going up Lancafra. Guys, I'm still alive. That's really pretty amazing <laughs> for a first hike. <laughs> when I created the group, I got so many messages. It made me realise how much is needed for people from like, you know, these backgrounds to sort of get outdoors and get into the adventure world. I felt that a lot of women wanted to do this, but they just felt quite intimidated. How's your hike going? Yeah, brilliant. It's just the start now though, isn't I it? I know. <laughs> we've still got a long way to go. Yeah, we have, yeah. Have you met many diverse groups when you've been hiking? Yeah, when I was on uh, Old Man of Connison, we was with three Muslim brothers. Amazing. Going through all the mine shafts with our torches. Yeah. We only got so far though, we? <laughs> It's like at that moment you just become like a hiking family and you sort of stick yeah. together and... Yeah, there's no social walls when you're hiking because everybody's here to do the same thing. So it is common ground. Especially from you know, Muslim women from my community, they find it difficult to make that first step and that's why you know, I created this group and started it in lockdown and now, you know, we've got like over 4,000 members and, you know, they all just want to go hiking together and I feel like they, they love doing what they're doing but they just needed that sort of safe space to do it. And yeah. We live in a beautiful country, it's a shame not to explore it. Growing up in Bolton has shaped who I am today. In such a small town where there are so many different communities, it's helped me to understand the importance of different cultures and religions. It's really important to be around a community where you feel safe. Hi, walaikum salam. And growing up here, we, we had that. You see a lot of people wearing the hijab and the niqab, so you feel comfortable to go out. I'd ever heard of any female Muslim girl to go on a hike before. She started to tell our clients about it. Everybody was really intrigued. They wanted to know all about it. What do they need to wear? That was one of their main concerns, I'd remember. Amira would be like, it's absolutely fine, just be yourself. You can still be modest. You can still explore the outdoors. She's opened up an area people didn't know existed. My mum's always been my role model. We always knew we were both different from sort of our communities because we just used to live our life and not bother what people say. I'm really, really proud of her because um, She's encouraging so many women who otherwise wouldn't go out in the outdoors. Look, I think it's important that parents actually take the children out themselves. I think that if I hadn't done it, she might have taken a different route, just being in an ordinary job. I always encourage both of my children to chase your passion. Typically Asian families, they want the children to be doctors and dentists. And I kind of was against that. I just wanted my children to be happy. I think if my mum didn't introduce me, I don't think I would have taken that step to actually be a leader. So we've just got to our first midpoint, which is Scales Town. And it's loving life so right nice now. right now. <laughs> and we're gonna do our second prayer of the day. On all of my hikes, I always take my travel prayer mat with me. As a Muslim, we're always remembering God wherever we are. 
So wherever you may be, we stop for that moment and we do our prayers. When you're on a mountain, when there's nothing around you, just the beautiful landscape, you can actually switch off and remember God like inside. And I think that's the most beautiful part of my journey. So Ali, this is your first mountain. How do you feel? I feel like I was born to do this. I'm just so glad that you've enjoyed it. And I'm actually so proud. <laughs> Honestly, Thanks for being a leader. <laughs> for me, everyone's like, you know, where's your home? And I'm like, the mountains are my home. Like, this is, this is the place where I feel like the most safe. I just feel like when I go out, I, I stop, I think, I reflect on the blessings that God has given to me. And I feel as if I've been given a place to live in this world with, alongside all this beauty and all my problems just gone. It's just a really purifying thing. Everyone feels a little bit lost in the world, don't they? But actually, when we look back on our sunnah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you think about that's exactly what he did. He, he went into the caves to reflect, to meditate, to think to gain perspective and we don't do that enough in our lives. We're literally walking through the verses of the Quran. It's definitely worth the trek, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's not the easiest place to get to either. Mm. Like, I'm lucky I have a car. I've always wanted to do all these amazing things, but the transport is a massive issue. And um, I feel as if also, even in our community, it's not normal for us women as a Muslim to go out because we might discriminate against us and it's just not normalized when you know after meeting you I was like I need to like do everything that I can. I think that's the part that women are we're trying to sort of focus on is that representation part to try and change the views and yeah. ways that people see. I want to see women from the UK like from Birmingham, London, Bradford like everywhere, everywhere like united and we're like one one sisterhood like we feel like we belong we have identity we have like we can diverse the uh, mountains. It's mm. not a hiking group is it? It's almost yeah. like a social movement. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking these barriers. Yeah. It's really important to see inclusivity and representation of Muslim women in outdoor and sport because that's the only way that is going to encourage the community. You know, the younger girls, they need to look up to these women as role models. You've crossed so many boundaries. Just keep growing and make people feel that it's for them, no matter what colour, race, age. Yeah. I really believe that once you take that first step, the world is your oyster. I can't be the only one to have these passions and dreams. I'm sure there's so many other women that want to go outdoors and become leaders. Our planet now.